to stop the epidemic of end of life regrets. When we're even planning like our financial futures, everyone talks about our retirement, but they don't talk about, well, what happens to your parents? Would you mind sharing like the range of what it costs to take care of your mom at this time? Between seven and 10K a month. This is why I'm telling y'all, we should all be millionaires. Do you understand? How do we put that? living back into making a living. Too many of us have spent our whole life on shoulds and we're miserable and we're burnt out and we're sick and we still gotta take care of everything. We map out a plan for Kareen to make more money so that she can continue to take care of her mom. What's the best next step into turning it into something more scalable? Bringing more focus allows people to know who you are and what you can do for them and it will cause you to actually grow faster. For those of you that are out there that have kids you're taking care of, you have aging parents that you're taking care of, of and you're feeling the squeeze, this episode is for you. You want to make more money? You are in the right place. Welcome to the Hello 7 podcast. That's seven as in seven figures. I'm your host, Rachel Rogers. Welcome back to the Hello 7 podcast. Today, I'm so excited to be sitting down with my client, Kareen. And today we're talking about the sandwich generation. So for those of you that are out there that have kids you're taking care of, you have aging parents that you're taking care of, and you're feeling the squeeze, this episode is for you. We map out a plan for Kareen to make more money so that she can continue to take care of her mom and the expenses that come along with taking care of aging parents, okay? So we gotta be prepared. This is why we all have to be millionaires. So we'll talk about how Kareen has various different businesses and various different offers, and none of them seem to be making her the amount of money that she wants to be making. So it's time to streamline and get really clear on what is the purpose, what is the brand, what is the messaging, what are we doing here, and how are we gonna get her to the revenue goal that she has for herself. So please enjoy this coaching episode with Kareen Canty. If you wanna learn how to coach like me, let me tell you, I have an opportunity for you. The Hello7 Coach Certification is an opportunity for you to gain coaching skills and learn how to coach just like me. I actually do all kinds of business training. You're gonna do practice coaching in there. You're gonna get weekly classes and you get a group coaching call with me every single month, all as part of the program, all designed to help you become an exceptional business coach. Graduates from our program have quit their jobs, 10X their investment, and generated $20,000 a month consistently. These are the kinds of results that are available to you if you choose to enroll in this program. The coaching industry waits for no one. If you are ready to become a certified coach, this is your moment. Our next cohort starts soon and spots are limited. Don't miss this opportunity to start a new career and start transforming lives. Head to hello7.co slash coach to learn more and start today. And tell me, what are all the different revenue streams you have popping off right now? Yes. Yeah, so I have two businesses. Um, one is called Shift to Play. It's a culture strategy firm where we do improv and play and go into corporations and do team building, creativity, innovation, awesome. all that, that kind of good stuff. Um, and I have an executive life coaching business that's pivoting to a speaker coaching business. And those are my main streams of income right now. Okay. So the executive life coaching business, what were you doing in that one? So that one I've been doing primarily one-on-one -on -one coaching with women who have reached that point in their career where they really need to course correct. They've checked all the boxes, got the title, got the salary and realized that it was somebody else's life yes. and they're not really happy or they've been giving to everyone else and they don't want to spend the rest of their career doing that and ending up with regrets. Okay. And then there's a third one. Well, I am working on writing a book, but I'm not okay. making a revenue stream from that right now. Okay. So you're working on writing a book. Yeah. And then you mentioned speaking. Yeah, I do do speaking. Um, I kind of lump that in with my coaching business. Um, so I do do speaking. I'm a TEDx speaker and an official TEDx speaker coach. And so I do do speaking at different types of organizations and conferences and some companies hire me to come in and speak to their employees. Okay. Well, what about the speaker coaching you mentioned? Yeah. So I've had several people in the last three or four months come to me because they know that I'm an official TEDx speaker coach and that I do speaking and I've done improv for like 15 years. And so that's a great way to teach people how to have stage presence and engage with audiences. And so a lot of people in my circle have just been like, I, I want to do a TEDx. I want to speak. I want to do these things. Could you yes. help me with that? Can you coach me on that? And I said, okay, universe, after like the fifth person, I said, mm. maybe this is something I should be leaning into because it hadn't actually crossed my mind to mm. lean into that in my coaching business. 
Interesting. <clears throat> so this is a skill that you have. It's aligned. It sounds like it's aligned with the other things. There does seem to be a through line between like the improv that you're doing, mm -hmm. you're a speaker, you do coaching mm -hmm. and now speaking coaching. Like these are all kind of related things. Yes. Yes. Okay. So why do you do so many things to make money? I think I started just by following my joy and my passion after 20 years in corporate when I decided to take a break both from kind of the burnout and then becoming a caretaker to my mom and her yes. partner. So I just needed to figure that out and not make myself sick again. Um, people started coming to me for coaching. And so I was like, oh, I can do this during my break. And then my co-founder and my shift to play business, he left corporate at the same time. And we had talked about taking this into other businesses for like 10 years. I was like, oh, that's fun. Yeah, let's do this now too. We've talked about it for 10 years. So it wasn't necessarily strategic. It was just, oh, these things are coming to me and happening and I love to do it. And so let me lean into my joy. And I had a, enough of a cushion for the last couple of years that I was able to play around yes. um, and be able to explore these things. And I think what's starting to happen is like the speaker coaching, things are starting to come together on, okay, what do I really want to build? Yes. And where do I really want to turn this into the thing that I'm actually making a living from. Yes. So right now, are you working the amount that you want to be working? Yeah, actually, I I, I work about, between the two companies, I do work about 30 hours a week. And okay. so I do have a lot of flexibility um, by design because I, I still do a lot of caretaking duties for my mom. So I got to make sure I have those pockets blocked off. And I think that's one of the things in this season of life that's very important to me is because yes. I don't know what that flexibility is. And even though I was a single mom and I knew how to navigate that back in the day when you had to figure out how to take care of the kids and do all the things, it's a whole different level of it when you have to like mother your mother. Yes. And know yes. that there's like, she's not growing up. It's kind of going in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And so it's a season to have to learn how to deal with uncertainty. Yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of talk in the, in the media about the sandwich generation, which mm -hmm. is millennials now, where we have kids and we also have parents that need our help. So it's a lot. Yes. It's a lot to manage and it's a lot to keep up with. And the needs are very real and very urgent. Yes. You know, and so money helps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> money absolutely helps because then you can hire help. Right. Mm -hmm. Either for yourself, like maybe you want to do all the parenting, but you want somebody to clean the house or do these other things to get them off your plate. Right. Like, mm -hmm. so I think that's so important right now. And, you know, it's part of the reason why we're having all of these conversations on the podcast. It's like we got to make more money so that we could create more spaciousness for yes. ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. and and take care of all the things we need to take care of without the stress of like, how am I going to make ends meet? Yeah. And one of the things that you've inspired me a lot um, through just me following you for a long time and then meeting you in person multiple times is I learned over my career, like I never talked about my achievements. I never talked about, and I, I grew pretty quickly in my career and got the titles and the salary, but I realized because I'm the only one in my family who went to college or made any money or is able to take care of anything, basically, um, one of one of my friends kind of pointed out that like, I think you have survivor's remorse mm. because I couldn't celebrate those things in my family because then it's either, oh, I think I'm too good or, right. oh, you made some money. Can I have all of it? Right. You know, because I don't want to go make money. And so I think I had learned to kind of keep myself small or not share mm. or not talk about, oh, I want to make a lot of money because then there were these different types of consequences that I wasn't consciously processing. Yes. Well, that's that's very real. And have you had that actually happen or do you or are you just thinking that it's going to happen? No, I've had it actually happen. And so even now as I'm talking more about my businesses and doing these things in the world, I still have that little yes. you know, that little thing inside like, oh, who's going to listen and what am I going to have to deal with after sharing this? Or, you know, should I even be bragging when so many people don't have what I have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not bragging. It's it's actually just showing what's possible. And you're actually just telling the truth. Yeah. It's not hiding. Yeah. Right. Um, and even if you're bragging, so like what's wrong with that? What's right. wrong with letting people know if we don't celebrate our accomplishments, no one else is going to do it for us. I'll say that again. If we don't celebrate our accomplishments and let the world know Mm -hmm. right? The results that we're getting in the world mm -hmm. and the value that we're providing, 
no one will know, right? right? Like we're the only ones that can share that. And that is a very important element of making more money. Yes. Um, but I've been there as well. And I think I had times where I was imagining what people were going to say when mm -hmm. I made more money. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I did start sharing it. Particularly, I wrote a book called We Should All Be Millionaires. Yes. And then I was like, oh, now everyone knows I'm a millionaire. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't really thinking about it. I was so focused on the story I wanted to tell and, you know, the message that I wanted to send to women that I wasn't thinking that I was like telling my story to right. so many people. It's easy to do it for other people. Yes. 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 And then I was like, oh, now everybody wants to hit me up. And you know what solved that? Boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, I take care of plenty of people in my family um, and even friends from time to time. But I also have no problem saying no when it's yeah. a no for me. Like my personal policy is be a joyful giver. Mm. And if my giving does not feel joyful to me, I say no. I love that. Um, and that's that on that, yeah. you know, and, you know, be mad if you want to. Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> that's I mean, that's like the perfect metric because that's what I'm constantly coaching other people on. And then sometimes we don't necessarily use our own tools. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay. So going back to the business, mm -hmm. I asked you about time. So mm -hmm. you're working 30 hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then talk to me about money. Are you making the money that you want to make from these various businesses? Um, right now, um, with the businesses combined, I'm making around in the 200, 200K. Um, I would like to make at least three or 400K because of the caretaking expenses that I have with my mother and just yes. making sure I can provide the best care and the best end of life scenario that I can for her. Yes. 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 And would you mind sharing like the range of what it costs to take care of your mom at this time? I think it's important for mm -hmm. people to understand and to know. Yeah. And also just so that they know that they're not alone. Um, because I heard another entrepreneur talking about this recently and I was shocked when she told me you know, what the costs mm -hmm. were that she had to maintain every month, like in addition to everything else. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, would you mind sharing that? Yeah, the cost of care for my mother is between 7 and 10K a month at this point um, because I do have her in an age in place, assisted living type of place where she can have community because she lived with me for a couple of years. And then I realized she's just sitting in the chair, her and her partner, watching TV all day, not moving and just kind of rotting away. Yeah. And... It's putting her in a place where she has community and she goes and gathers to eat and she goes and plays bingo. Yes. And even though um, she didn't want to go, she, she everyone has this perception of what it means to age and be put somewhere. Yes. Right? Um, but I wanted to make sure she was in a place that wasn't a place where she was going to feel bad about, but a place that was going to help her keep as much of her mental capacity as she could because we know what community and socialization does for that. And yes have her still feel like she could have friends because she's at the age where most of her friends have passed and she yes. didn't have anybody to talk to. And that can be really hard. Yeah. I passed by a building recently that I was like, oh, they're putting up new luxury condos. And it was it was for seniors. Mm -hmm. um, so they got some fly spots. They do. <laughs> they do. They do. I'm like, can I move in? They do. And I'm going to get the place. I'm going to get the apartment next door. <laughs> they're nice, but they cost a lot. And yes. so it's something I think we're not talking about enough. No one yes. tells us about enough. And so when we're even planning like our financial futures, everyone talks about our retirement, but they don't talk about, well, what happens to your parents or other people that you take care of who might not have come up in a place where they planned for that? Yes, right. They might have had some savings or some retirement that, that they planned for, but because of inflation mm -hmm. or because they didn't plan to either live as long as they did, which, you know, hopefully they do live as long as possible, right? Um, or for whatever reason, it winds up coming up short. Yeah. Um, I have so many clients and friends who are in this exact scenario. And I, I, my, luckily, my mother is very healthy, um, but I certainly make payments every month to take care of her. Mm -hmm. um, and same thing with my mother-in-law. You know, mm -hmm. and so this is why I'm telling y'all we should all be millionaires. Do you yes. understand? Right. Like this is why. So that when the people who matter most to you and the things that are important in life come up, it's like nothing to write that check. Right. Because mm -hmm. you have more than enough. Right. Like you have enough for yourself, but you also prepared for those kinds of scenarios like that's an option, you know, that you can be prepared and that you can have more money. So, you know, for some people, 10K a month, 
you know, to take care of their parents would be like absolutely debilitating. Right. Yeah. And <clears throat> as entrepreneurs or even side hustlers, we get to say, OK, what can I do to make that extra 10K so it's not a problem? You know, yes. Even if you don't already have it, you can figure it out, yes. you know? Yes. Um, and so that's why I think we should all be entrepreneurs as well. Even if you're not a full-time entrepreneur, having a side hustle so that you can flex your income up mm -hmm. and down as needed when you need to is critical. And that as a single mom, I was a mom in high school. So my whole career, I was a single mom. I have two kids and I always had something on the side. Like yes. I had to have something on the side because I wanted Christmas to be good. Or, yes. or like my son went to tech camps that were ridiculously priced. <laughs> and, you know, and so there's all these things. And so I did learn that early on yes. is that you can go supplement if you just figure out what you want. And I had fun on my side stuff. Like yes. that was where I leaned into the things that I really enjoyed doing. Yes. Okay. So speaking of enjoyment, mm -hmm. out of all of the things that you're doing right now, what are, what are like, what's the thing that is lighting you up the most? Mm -hmm. So the thing that lights me up the most is when I am working with women and they have that aha moment Yes. and they find their voice. Okay. And not only in the world, but with themselves. Yes. And so I realized that that's even probably the bigger thread between how I coach and leaning into the thought leadership and speaker coaching because whoever I coach, I want you to take agency in your own life yes. because too many of us have spent our whole life on shoulds and this is what you should do to be successful. This is who you should look like in the world. This is how you should do these things and we're shooting all over ourselves for yes. our whole life and we're miserable and we're burnt out and we're sick and we still got to take care of everything. Yes. And so when you can have that aha moment where it's like, okay, first let's get clear and present with yourself and yes. the life you want to live. Then we can redesign everything regardless if you're in corporate or if you're in entrepreneurship or if you're in any type of, of role that you might be doing to make a living. But how do we put that living back into making a living? So you're present in your life. So then you can be a presence in the world. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So Helping women and get free, basically, yes. and not carry the burdens of taking care of everybody all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and never show up in the world, especially now. Yes. Like we, need your, we need your ideas. We need your thoughts. We need your voice. We need your perspective. And creativity. Yes. 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 Exactly. Instead of, you know, just being like, okay, well, I took care of that. Now, who do I have to take care of next? Okay, I took right. care of that. Now, who do I have to take care of next? Okay, right. I took care of that. You know, and then you're just running around meeting everyone's needs except your own. Mm -hmm. um, and that is not the way to thrive. No, you cannot pour from an empty cup. And we try and try and try mm -hmm. and forget to fill our own cups. Exactly. Okay, so what would it take for you to make the $400,000 that you want to make in take home, mm -hmm. to be clear, not total revenue? Mm -hmm. Um, from your speaker coaching? What are your thoughts on just going all in on that? What's stopping you from doing that? So I'm just at the beginning stages of leaning into that. And so I realized that one of the things that I need to do just, just to make it scalable is not have as many one-on-one -on -one coaching clients and lean more into things like workshops and group coaching. And I have several people asking me about a community. And so there's these things that I'm thinking about and trying to figure out like what's the best next step into turning it into something more scalable. ROI The Millionaire Summit is back for the third time. It's happening in January 2025 for entrepreneurs that are looking to grow a seven-figure business and beyond. We'll have amazing speakers, incredible networking, lots of connection, community, and fun, and actionable steps that you can take to get a return on your investment in this amazing event. It's all happening January 15th through the 17th in Orange County, California, right outside of LA. So easy to fly to. And what's really special about this year is that we are including luxury accommodations with your ticket. That's right. You don't have to pay an extra fee for a hotel room. It's all included in your ticket. But these rooms will sell out and tickets are going fast. And the price goes up every week. So you will be rewarded for taking quick action. So make sure you go to hello7.co slash ROI to get your ticket now. Okay. And so t tell us how, how, did the, how did you wind up in the speaker coaching? 
Yeah. So after several people kept asking me about it, I reached out to a couple little like networking groups that I'm in because a lot of the women were in those groups. And I said, hey, a lot of people are asking me about this. If I set up a, a group coaching cohort and you guys are kind of the first people, would you be interested? And of course, it was paid. And I said, you will be helping me figure out if this is something I want to do. I was just yes. very transparent of if this is an offer, if I want to pivot this way. And I wanted to keep it small at first. I wanted to have enough um, space for everyone to kind of share and give feedback. And so um, I wanted to keep it to 10. I had like 13 people pay all at once. And so I had to cut it off and start a wait list. And so I said, oh, people really want this because I didn't even publicly put it out there. I didn't put it on any of my social media or mm -hmm. in, not even in my larger networks. And it filled up. And so that's when kind of the light bulb went off. And so we're halfway into that cohort. And I'm still getting the same things I love about like helping people with their lives because that just happens naturally when yes. you're trying to find your voice and your big idea and your story. Well, that's what I that's why I asked you like what is it about your work that you enjoy mm -hmm. just to see because what I don't want to happen for you and I think this can happen for a lot of people is like people ask for something and so then you create an offer around it and you uh -huh. create a business around it and then you wind up going down that rabbit hole and then somebody asks for something else and then you create that and somebody mm -hmm. asks for something else and mm -hmm. you create that and that is how business starts right where yeah. you're just like anybody with a pulse who wants to pay me <laughs> yeah. I will do whatever the hell you want damn near <laughs> right because I just yeah. need to pay these bills yes. right or I replace this income and get out of this job I don't like yes. you know whatever it is but then at a certain point, and it shouldn't be too far from the beginning, mm -hmm. there has to be a streamlining moment if mm -hmm. you want to scale. Yeah. Because what you can't, I shouldn't say you can't, what is going to be difficult to do, especially maintaining working less hours and not being full time, is growing and scaling, you know, three, four different businesses mm -hmm. and revenue streams yes. at one time. Yeah. Because I feel I actually lost count. I want to say it's five, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> five things that you mentioned. Yeah. And listen, I'm all about multiple revenue streams, but I'm about multiple revenue streams after you hit a million. Right. Like I want to see you get a million with one offer so that it's simple, it's streamlined. Also, your messaging is simple and streamlined, mm -hmm. right? Because what's going to happen is people don't know what you can help them with. Right. They hear you like promoting this, then you're promoting this other thing, then you're promoting this other thing, and they're all different things. Um, and then people are like, I don't really know what she does. <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. And so you want when people are like, you know, oh, um, like so if somebody's walking around saying like, I just, I need to make more money. I don't know how to grow this business. I want to make a million dollars. As soon as they say the words, I want to make a million dollars, they're like, oh, you need to go find Rachel Rogers. <laughs> yes. She's going to help you, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? And so that's what you want so mm -hmm. that when someone is saying, I want to do a TEDx talk, but I'm afraid, mm -hmm. oh, I know exactly. You you need to talk to Corrine. She is going to help you. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. So like you... I think you need to decide, mm -hmm. right? And you don't have to do it now. And one of the things that I think helps with that is like putting it on the shelf. So mm -hmm. like, for example, I had a thriving business um, with Small Business Bodyguard, which is a digital product mm -hmm. that, you know, is basically the next best thing to hiring a lawyer, mm -hmm. right? And that was making a lot of money. I used to do a webinar once a month for that product and it was making me 60 grand a month with one webinar. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would just run that play again the next month, yeah, you know? Yeah. And that's what I was doing. But then when I discovered that I wanted to go all in on Hello7, I just realized, like, I can't keep doing those webinars. I can't keep running that business. Like, I need to focus mm -hmm. if I want to scale. And sometimes it does mean during that focus time that, like, okay, now I'm not getting that 60 grand or that 60 grand drops down to 20 grand or something like mm -hmm. that in the short term. You know, and now on the other side of that, there's an eight figure business. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like it was worth it. Um, and so I think narrowing it down and bringing more focus allows people to know who you are and what you can do for them. Yes. And it will cause you to actually grow faster. I think when we're doing all these different business sprinkling mm -hmm. in a lot of different places mm -hmm. um, and therefore we can't have like major impact and really like uh, permeate a market because mm -hmm. we're just you know, sprinkle a little cinnamon on top. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. One of, um, I saw one of my friends post on LinkedIn just this morning and it kind of, it was like a great analogy of building a business or businesses. You can either build like a strip mall and have things spread out or a skyscraper. Yes. And I was like, oh, that's such a good analogy. Yes. And I think one of the things that's important to recognize is the strip mall, um, 
is a lot for one person to manage, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. or a small team to manage. Mm -hmm. So like if you said, you know, like Pinky Cole, for example, um, I talked to her about business like a a year or so ago. She she spoke at ROI Mm -hmm. um, and she was saying like her philosophy is like she just has an idea. She launches it and she hires a manager to run that business Mm -hmm. immediately, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that's her strategy. So sometimes you see people out here doing a thousand different things, but they also are building team immediately right. to run those things so mm-hmm. that those things can thrive. Right. And they're sort of staying in the visionary seat, but they're not like, you know, running the day to day of that business. Yeah. So that is a very different thing than us like, OK, starting, you know, various different businesses, none of which make us the total income that we want. Right. Yeah. And so then you're like, OK, constantly going between marketing this, selling that, marketing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so what comes up for you when you think about like if you were to go and I'm I'm just guessing. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know which one you should go all in on, but let's say you went all in on the speaking and you decided to close the improv, like the play business that you're doing the team training with or the executive coaching. Um, How do you feel about that? I feel like leaning into the speaking actually is what integrates everything. Okay, I don't even feel like it's something that like you have to get rid of it because I feel like it's the one thing that takes the core of what those things are and puts it in one place for the output. And because I think that everything that I know and do and teach in improv lends itself to the speaker coaching, speaker coaching, presence, executive presence, thought leadership, all of those things. They're all, I realize tools in what I'm actually giving to people and what I'm actually helping people build. Because when I, when I think about, regardless of what I call the coaching, when I'm coaching someone one-on-one, I'm always encouraging them to find their voice and how do they speak up and how do you tell your story and how do you, because I understand personal branding because I've been in marketing for 20 years. Yes. And so I have the skill set and the backbone. And I think what I'm realizing, especially as you're kind of laying it out this way, is that it's not a pick or choose. It's a recognizing, oh, these are all puzzle pieces you've been trying to play with on different Mm -hmm. tables. Mm-hmm. And you can only put the puzzle together on one table. Right. It's like we need one container. Yes. So, you know, your your work could contain many facets mm-hmm. in one container. Yes. But when you create multiple different businesses and multiple different containers and each container like has a different ideal client, mm-hmm. that's when it gets very messy. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So I do see a through line with all of the, all of the things that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. You're like your your goal is to help people find their voice. Like mm-hmm. that's clear. Mm-hmm. Um, but how you do it, what's the main vehicle that you do it with? Like, what is the flagship offer? Mm -hmm. Because you want to think about like, okay, if I want to make extra money this month, what am I going to do? I'm going to pull this lever, right? Right. Which is my flagship offer. I'm just going to market it and Mm -hmm. get new people into it. And that's that Bob's your uncle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you're like, okay, well, I have these various businesses and this one has a business partner. And so I can't make all the decisions by myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I have this and then I have this. It just creates like, okay, which one am I selling? Who am I talking to this week? Right. Right? Even when you're creating content, it becomes difficult because it's like, what content do you create that Mm -hmm. speaks to all different markets? Everything becomes easier. And you're just like using less brain cells. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like when it's all streamlined, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And things just hit faster. Yes. You know, when that's happening. Yes. So that's what I'm encouraging you to do is like, okay, how can you just create one container, mm-hmm. make it simple for yourself mm-hmm. so that, you know, you can be running this one cohort or maybe a couple mm-hmm. at one time and you're done, right? Yeah. And you get all of the revenue that you need and yeah. you get the rest of your time back to go create and play for yourself mm-hmm. um, and then also take care of your mom. Yeah, and and I feel like that's where I can also make the biggest impact that I want to make. Yes. Because I think that's most important to me, especially at this age and season of life is, yes, I still want to be successful. Yes, I still want to live a certain way and take care of people, but I also want to make sure I'm making an impact yes. in the world. Yes. Yeah. I love that. And I also think, too, like, I think you can executive coaching is included in the speaker coaching, Mm -hmm. right? Like Mm -hmm. it's you wind up doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, because people are telling their story and they have to figure out what they want to share and what, what impact they want to have. Right. Yeah. And and we're in a world now where like you can't be an executive without having a personal brand. Right. Without showing up. Otherwise you're not 
adding the value that you should with the way that humans engage with businesses. Exactly. I was talking to um, uh, an entrepreneur the other day who runs a law practice. She wants to hire another associate, uh, another lawyer, Mm -hmm. but she's like, lawyers today aren't rainmakers. And she's like, I don't want you to just come in and practice law. I want you to come in and practice Mm -hmm. law and bring in clients. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, the pressures of mm-hmm. being an executive, right? Having your own brand. The other thing is it gives you more control. If you have your own yes. brand and that company lays you off, somebody else is going to immediately snap yes. you up because yes. you've built that audience, mm-hmm. right? And you have that that cachet yes. that you didn't have before. Yeah. So so tell me, like, what are you thinking in terms of this offer? What What is this offer? What is the version of this speaking coaching that can make you the 400000 that you want? Yes. I'm leaning into it being based on people who want to either go for a real TEDx or learn how to share their story in a TEDx type of style, because I think that's a good foundation for learning how to tell a story and make it impactful, whether it's about yourself or whatever you're an expert in. Yes. That you can then take that and that's the foundation to every other stage you might want to be on or every other piece of content that you want to create. Exactly. In the world. Okay. What did you charge for this this group coaching? For this one, I charged, I gave the people who were in, um, who've coached with me before a discount. So I started off small at around 750 with the caveat that I also need you guys to do some work for me as I'm okay. building it and give feedback and let them know that this is just my initial pricing to be able to build this thing. And how many people do you have in it? 13. Okay. So 750 for how long? So we have monthly engagements up until February. So I'm kind of playing it as I go, but I wanted it to be a spread out container with more space in between so people could really learn how to do their talks and engage with each other. And that's the one thing I learned about having groups is how much having those women together also adds so much value for them Mm -hmm. to hear each other's thoughts and to be able to work with each other. So knowing that the holidays were in the middle of it. <laughs> it was it's a six month engagement, but with time out for the holidays. So you're working with them for six months for $750 one time? Yes. Okay. I think that's too low. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you char- need to charge a lot more money. Yes. Okay. So you know how when you, um, when you went to visit the facility that you chose for your mother mm-hmm. and they told you it was $10,000 and you were like, Damn, that's a lot. <laughs> I want you to keep that same energy of that yes. that facility yes. like they charge. Yes. I want you to charge like that. Yes. <laughs> okay. No, and I totally get and I and I even heard you you in my mind when I was doing it, but in my my mind I was like I'm not doing this as a public offer. I just want to test it. Um we could get paid for testing. No, that's true. Yeah. Testing is work. Mm-hmm. Okay? So for all of y'all at home, if you're doing a beta test and you're still going to provide value, you need to charge what you would charge for the thing because otherwise it's not a true test then, right? Because mm-hmm. it's heavily mm-hmm. discounted. Like they're getting a absolute steal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have 20 years of experience. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. You have been doing coaching. You have trained teams at corporations, mm-hmm. right? Like your experience is exceptional and you're bringing 20 years of experience and giving them six months of it for $750. That ain't going to work. Yeah. You know? Um. So... I thought you were going to say like 5000 honestly 10 times that amount, like 7500 at least. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, for what you're doing, especially in a small group where they get more time, more attention. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot and of more value of the one-on-one. Exactly. Yeah. And what is the end result of the program? So we're working together, number one, to pull out the stories that they really want to tell, not just, oh, I should do this because this is my career. I should do this because of whatever. So that kind of ties into the life piece. So by the end, they will have understood what story they really want to tell. They will have shaped a talk that they could go then apply, and they will have learned everything there is to know about the real deal of getting a TEDx talk because you see so many people out there like, I can get you a TEDx talk in 30 days. And I'm like, that's impossible because you don't even know when they're having the TEDx talks to (laughs) to be able to apply and get in. And so when I did my talk, there was so much I wish I would have learned before I did it that I could have even gotten more value out of the experience outside of like, oh, I checked a box of something I really wanted to do for myself. And so I'm using this really as like a, a launching pad. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, I want you to charge a lot more money for this. 
<laughs> I knew the one thing that I would walk away with today from talking to Rachel, no matter what. Tell me where the, t- how did we get here? Tell me where the $750 came from. I really, I just, that's just kind of what number came in my head of me saying, I'm just kind of throwing this together and I wanted to make it accessible. I think part of it was because the women who reached out to me, I know half of them were in transition and they weren't employed. And so I think that's part of what was in my decision making of the amount of people that I know were in transition that were asking me about like, how do I even take this next step of becoming a thought leader? Because I'm in a job market where I have never built a brand and I don't know how to get another job because nobody will respond. Yes. Okay. But that's not your problem. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So like your responsibilities are yourself, your mom, your kids, right? Mm -hmm. First. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you see how you start taking on the responsibility of other people can take care of. You don't know what they have saved. That's true. They could be in transition and have you know, a million dollars in the bank. And they're like, I'm good while they're looking for their next job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I should use myself as an example because <laughs> when Rachel puts something out there, I go to it. <laughs> what? So I get right. it. Right, and yeah. Rachel ain't giving you no discount. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because I know who I have to take care of, right? Yes, like, yes. And so I know that with what I'm charging, I also need to take care of my team. That's part of my responsibilities that I signed up for. My team don't want to hear nothing about how I don't have payroll. Right. Right. Because, right. oh, because these people needed some help because they were in transition. Mm-hmm. They're going to be like, now we in transition. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. So let's prioritize. I think sometimes we do this, especially as black women and women of color in general, like mm-hmm. we try to solve the world's problems. You know what I'm saying? And make them our own. And I want us to stop. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, I think we actually can solve a lot of problems. I think we can have a big impact. But we can't do that if we can't meet our own needs first. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. It's like when all of those boxes are checked Mm -hmm. and you don't got a care in the world, Mm -hmm. um, then you have the ability to have a major impact. Right? And you also have the skill of like, okay, I've scaled this business. I know what that looks like to solve a problem at scale. Mm -hmm. Now I can use those skills to solve other problems at scale. Right. Um, Because what happens is when we're like, no, we have to do it now. We have to help now. Of course we can in different Mm -hmm. ways, but when we take on too much of it, it's not sustainable. Our help will be very short lived. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, because, right, like one of the things that you were thinking about doing was potentially getting another job, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. like, you know, just to make it all work again. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's taking you away from being able to continue to do that work. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Instead of, instead of like, okay, now I can have impact and help these people long term. Now it's like, I'm getting cut off because I didn't charge enough. And so now it's not sustainable for me to continue this work. Right. You know, yeah. it's like, Capitalism is what we live in, whether we yeah. like it or not. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. It is yes. our current reality, yes. yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And so we have to like build businesses and build our income and our revenue sources based on the reality that we are currently living, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so we're never doing that again, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 750 is like a one-on-one session for 30 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe an hour. Yeah. That's that like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that is not six months of your time. So for all the women watching that are currently <laughs> in Corrine's program, just know you got to steal and it's never happening again. <laughs> also, we want to see those testimonials and they better be popping. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> so do you know that you do you love this work? Like, how are you feeling about do. doing it now? I do. And especially and I realize how much I really love facilitating these groups Mm. and these group experiences. Yes. And it fills my cup every time. And I know that in so many different ways, like when I'm one-on-one coaching with someone, then we're kind of done. And they're like, well, what's next? Either they re-coach with me or not. But even in my own lived experience, when I've joined containers or like the club, I meet people who we become, you know, business besties or we become accountability partners and you find the people to continue the journey with. Yes. And many times those blossom into friendships and you just continue to support each other. And that's, that's not, you you don't have to pay your friend, but you now found someone who's on a similar journey. Yes. And you guys can help integrate and take the work forward. And you don't just like stop after you're out of the container. Right. 
Okay, so my question is, can you get these, uh, the folks that are in your speaker program, can you get them those results in three months? Yes. Okay. So what if you do a three-month container instead of six months? Like, let's launch another one. You got a wait list. Yeah. Do you know how many people are on the wait list right now? Right now, there's about 20 because I have not put it out publicly at all. But that keeps growing because people, people hear about it. Every yes. time I go somewhere, they're like, wait, I want to work with you. Wait, like, I just was at an event yesterday and I have like three more people like, when awesome. are you doing your next TEDx thing? Because I want to work. Fantastic. Okay. And so the amount of people that you want in one container is how many? Between 10 to 15. Okay. So let's say 15 because I want to see this income maximized. Okay. <laughs> So you have 15 people and it's a three month period. Um, and so what you want to take home is like $30,000 a month, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do we need to charge to get you the money that you're looking for? I think it's 10 grand because like, let's say, um, you know, you, you want to, so basically a hundred thousand dollars in a quarter, mm -hmm. right? And you have, if you have 10 people and you charge $10,000 a person for three months, right? That's a hundred grand. Right. And then if you squeeze in another five people, now we're talking 150,000. I like that even better. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So how do you feel about charging 10,000 for this uh, container? It's something I have to let my nervous system settle, <laughs> settle <laughs> with. But I definitely, you know, logically understand and get that that is the value that I'm adding. So I think it's, it's the getting out of my desire to want to help so much that I'm not realizing I'm not helping myself. Right. Yeah. And you are helping them because yes. you are giving them value in exchange. Yes. Like you're you're charging them what the value actually is, right? Yeah. A discount isn't always helpful. Right. Because sometimes when you underpay for something, then you undervalue it and then you don't get the full result. Right. You know? Right. Um, somebody, uh, I had somebody on the podcast recently who said, when I see an offer that's like, oh, it's $40 a month for this membership community. And she's like, that can't be good. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. we, when things are too inexpensive, mm -hmm. you're like, something ain't right. That's yeah. suspect. We you don't know? ever know what you're making me realize is like, we don't ever know other people's mindsets or perceptions. Exactly. Yeah. And we also don't know other people's pockets. So we right. got to stay out of them. Right. And stay in our own business. Right. In our own business, we know the math. Yes. And the math says we need to charge 10000 <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You know what I yes. mean? If we yes. can't put 300 people in it, right? Like if you could put 300 people in it and right. you want to charge them $1,000 each, cool. Right. Right. But yeah. like if it's 10 to 15, then it needs to be 10 grand. Yeah. Because those are completely different experiences. Exactly. Yes. Got yes. That. Yeah. And I think the people that you're choos to choosing to work with are executives mm -hmm. who want that high level experience and yeah. that high touch experience. Yes. And then you're able to deliver that at that price point. Because what, what the 750 does is, okay, I've got these people in the container. I'm loving this work. And now let me go find another side hustle or another mm -hmm. revenue stream. Or let me look at these other businesses yeah. I'm running and see what I could do over there. Or should I go back and get a full-time job? Because I can't stay focused on this because I'm not getting paid enough to focus. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I get that. So, and I think people appreciate having more of your attention, you know? Yeah. And I do get a lot of that feedback, too, of what it means when they get to have a smaller container or experience having someone be their mirror, like you're being for me right now. Yes. <laughs> Rachel is like one of the best mirrors possible to sit in front of <laughs> to see yourself. Yes. yes. And, yeah. you know, I think the pricing is just, I don't know. I don't know if it's fear mm -hmm. or the emotional things that come up, yeah. but like we love to underprice ourselves. Yeah. And like, I want to just stop this epidemic immediately. <laughs> yes. I need to get that in my system. Like I want to stop the epidemic of end of life regrets. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Correct. Okay. Now let's connect those two things. Okay. How does money connect to the end of life regrets, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't make enough money, mm -hmm. if you're not, if you don't have any disposable income, then you don't get to do like, oh, I've always wanted to go to Iceland right. and see the Northern Lights. Right. But I've never had the money to do it. Right. You know, I've always wanted to take a painting class or I've always wanted to learn Spanish or I've always wanted to learn to mm -hmm. play the piano. But you never do any of those things because you never had disposable income to be able to do any of right. those things. Right? right. So those two things, end of life regrets mm -hmm. and, and earnings are mm -hmm. highly connected. 
or disposable time because you're working two right. jobs. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So both of those yeah. things, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think speaking, not only that, the other thing that I would add to it for, for this new business and the messaging around it is it's a revenue stream, right? Like right. speaking could be a great side hustle for the people yeah. that are going through your program. You That's know, true. that like as executives, they're able to create their personal mm -hmm. brand and make some side money yeah. while they do it. And now that there's so many people realizing like, oh, corporate isn't necessarily the safe bet because we are in the era of layoffs. Right. Back to back to back. And people need a way to be able to use their expertise that they haven't given to a company for 20 years and nobody knows about it. Yes, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Okay, so okay. what's your homework going to be? My homework is to go home and write out my signature program. Awesome. And, offer and design it so I can launch my next cohort before the end of the year. Awesome. Yeah. And I want you to create a marketing plan for it. You're, you got 20 years of marketing mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. Bring that marketing genius that you've brought to all these corporations for so many years yeah. to your own offer. Yeah. Um, because I want you to launch and launch it big. Yes. Not just like, hey, wait list, if you want to join. Because we tend to do things like that. Like, oh, we're just going to tell some people. No. Okay. No, I'm going to do a real, like a real launch. Yes. Because I haven't done like a real big launch ever in in my businesses. Um, part of it is because I've just kind of been like, oh, I get clients. It's okay. But I also realized that I'm not never reaching my full potential. Exactly. Yes. Correct. Yes. Or the amount of money that you want to make. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so let's put a Amen. little bit more elbow yes. grease in. Some, yes. Some, some, some emails, some videos, some, some ways to connect, mm -hmm. like continuing to use the LinkedIn platform that you've been using mm -hmm. and just start talking to the people. And in fact, I would encourage you to start talking to them every day now. I mean, are you already doing that? Yes. I talk, I'm on LinkedIn every day. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And you're creating content or just responding to people? Both. I create okay. content every day. Um, Wonderful. In various areas. So you yeah. see how like you create a content every day mm -hmm. and then immediately people are like, how can I work with you? Yeah. Right. And they're inquiring about working with you. Yeah. So that connection, right? Like continuing to do that consistent marketing and then do a big splash around this offer. Yeah. And, you know, then you'll have the money that you need. You don't need to go back to corporate America. First of all, you're not going to be happy with that because you're not going to go back to corporate America and work 30 hours a week. That's true. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, can we just take that off the table? Yeah. That I think charging $10,000 is less scary than going back to corporate <laughs> America. Can we agree on that? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Awesome. Okay. Did awesome. you get what you came for? I did. Thank you. Awesome. I'm so happy to hear oh, that. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of the Hello 7 podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to this channel, leave us a review, and tell a friend about it. Okay? Sharing is caring. And I'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Hey, do you enjoy money? I do. If you want to make more money, then you need to join We Should All Be Millionaires, the club. Go to hello7.co slash club to see everything you get once you become a member. Hello7.co slash club. In the club, we teach you how to maximize your earning potential, how to make better financial and business decisions, how to set up systems so that you're building wealth over time. We keep you focused on your financial and business goals, and we do fun activities throughout the year to keep you motivated. During our last money-making challenge, our club members earned a grand total of $3,519,262.66, okay? $3.5 million as a community. That's a lot of money, y'all. If you want to get in on this, go to hello7.co slash club and become a member.